Well, good morning to you, my friends. <laughs> Happy New Year. Again, we're always uh, a little bit sad and chagrined that we cannot be with you in person. But I think about you and I visualize you in my church family, in all my church families. So uh, God bless you. We hope that soon we can begin to visit and and uh, church board will meet at our Marino Church on Jan January 9, and we'll discuss whether the situation has changed enough. But uh, the numbers are still not good, so we're very concerned. And of course, we uh, we're grieving still over uh, Pastor Alonzo Chen. Just uh, really heartbreaking to have such a giant in our church pass. So we will find a way to honor him well uh, soon. I don't know what the family will decide yet. But God bless you all. We're happy. Hope you had a lovely Christmas and uh, New Year. And here we go, 2021. Marino Valley Church, my friends at the La Sierra Spanish Church, English Service, and my friends with Pastor Ed. So let's have a word of prayer and then uh, we'll get into our message. I do, Father in heaven, we pray for your blessing to be with us. I think of each person, English and Spanish and all in my churches. We thank you for each one, Father. Pray a blessing on them. We thank you for how you have blessed our church this year. We got the new roof done. And uh, I have loved getting to know so many people. Now may this next year be better. May we find a way for this virus to go into the past and we get the vaccinations, whatever it takes. We can begin to be alive and together and to honor you and to do our mission into our community. So pray a blessing on Moreno Valley and on my friends here at the Spanish Church, Pastor Ed and the Haven and all else who may watch at some time or another. We pray for our mission projects. And may this be a year that we draw closer and closer to you. Go to the next level that we've been talking about doing and wishing and planning, but we never quite get to it. May this be the year where we truly become godly, spiritual, righteous people, more like Jesus, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you've heard the song, Operator, get me Jesus on the line. <laughs> There's a lot of jokes about getting Jesus on the line. Wouldn't that be something? If you could just call him up, get Jesus on the line. <clears throat> I have talked to the general conference president before. And you just, wow. Said to my wife, I'm on the line. What if you could get Jesus on the line? But most of us pray, we don't hear any voice on the other end. No one talks back to us. We don't get any feelings. It's just, how do you know that it's not all in your mind? That what you think is a relationship is really a relationship. That you know Jesus. What does that relationship look like? How do you know when you have that kind of a relationship? I had a young man Go through our school system, La Sierra Loma Linda, now early 30s, used to believe. Doesn't believe anymore. He said, I can't believe, Pastor Dan. I don't think I was ever meant to believe. Just gone. Relationships finished. You probably have heard of Tony Campolo. He's in his 80s now. Preached all over the world. He's preached right here at La Sierra University. Great man. And his son, Bart Campolo, he's in his 50s. He worked in a mission for 30-some years as a pastor. Pastor Bart Campolo doesn't believe any of it now. Doesn't believe in God, heaven, Jesus, any of it. Chaplain for atheists and secular humanists at USC in Los Angeles now. Where did it go? Where did it go? And most of us, when we come to the new year, just, we want to be better. Get closer to God. Get to know Jesus better. I'll read the Bible more. I'll go back to church more. I want to 
I want to really follow Jesus. Well, after a few days or weeks or months, it begins to fade away and we're back to where we were. So think about this today. Joseph and Mary and everybody else are going to the temple. Big service is going to be there. So they're going to go. Two, three days walk. But evidently on the way back, Joseph and Mary are having a good time talking to all their friends. They're one day already away from Jerusalem when uh, Mary looks at Joseph and he says, Where's Jesus? I thought he was with you. No, he's not with me. What did you do with him? Why could you lose him? They go racing back to Jerusalem, and of course, he's with the priests and the temple. How can you lose Jesus? Where's Jesus? How could you lose Jesus? You had an angel come to see you. You had the angels come to the shepherds, and the shepherds came to your house. You had the wise men. You had a star over your house. What more do you want? And you lost Jesus? You don't know where Jesus is right now? How can that happen? These people represent you and me. These were not bad people. These were not criminals. These were not atheists. They're super religious. They're going to camp meeting. They follow all the rules. You didn't have to go. The women didn't have to go. Mary went. They're just busy talking to their friends, living their ordinary life. And they've lost Jesus. How can you lose Jesus when you had everything? What did I do with Jesus? Where did it go? It, it happens to all of us. We get busy. It happens to me too. You get busy doing the work of the church. You've got work. You've got to work out. You've got to take care of your house. You've got your kids. You got your parents you got to go visit. You've got, you've got stuff to do. You got to go to the gym. You got to check Facebook. And all of a sudden, what you used to have, you don't have anymore. You lost Jesus. What did I do with Jesus? You didn't mean to lose him. It just got away from you. Lost the habit. All of a sudden, you begin to sense something's missing. Something's missing. Something doesn't feel right. This should be better. Life should be better than this. I thought Christmas would make me happy. We'd get everybody together. We'd get presents. We'd give presents. We'd have all this great food. We'll watch the games. We'll, uh, we'll have a little vacation. We don't have to work. I thought I'd be happy. We got a portable fire pit. Someone recommended to me, so Black Friday, I got that for the family. We've had some nice nights sitting around the fire. We went skiing. We've gone golfing. Nice time. But all of a sudden, the holiday is over. And you've got $2,000 more on your credit card bill, and you've gained five pounds, and all the wrappings and all they're in the trash. And you put the new books and the new ties and all, and you've eaten the candy. And I thought, I thought, I thought I'd be happier. Something's missing. Something's missing. A friend of mine got a brand new Mercedes sports car. Unbelievable. I got a chance to ride in it. That seats massage you while you're driving. You got heaters everywhere in your seat. It goes zero to 100 miles an hour in like four seconds. Not any happier than he was before. Something's missing. The Lakers and the Dodgers can win world championship. We've been waiting 30 years. Now you got to start another season. Start from the bottom again. That didn't do it. All that stuff we thought would make us happy forever. Didn't work. Something's still missing. Had a lady come to my office the last year, years ago. The guy that she was dating called me this last week. Hadn't been together 15 years. And she was dating this rich man, and she says, Pastor Dan, I've done everything. I thought that was what I wanted to do. I'd be happy. I have lived a fast life, she said. I have tried everything. I've been everywhere. 
But if you need someone to stand up here and say it didn't work, I found I was still empty inside. Something was missing. Because I, I needed Jesus. I lost Jesus somehow. When you feel that, something's missing. It's not because you don't have enough money. It's not because you married the wrong person. It's not because you need a vacation. You're missing Jesus. Something's missing. We try to do something else, but it doesn't work. And Jesus is knocking every day. Every day he's knocking. It's like that Nora Jones song, come away with me, let's go. He's knocking every day, hoping you'll spend some time with him today. You'll read the Bible. You'll listen to a sermon while you're driving or listen to a podcast while you're walking. Be in a small group. I was with a small group last night. It's good. They play ping pong for an hour and then they, they do Jesus. It's good. He's knocking. But if you got too busy for all that, you're going to feel something missing. Listen to those feelings inside. You're missing. Your soul is asking, where's Jesus? What did you do with Jesus? Yeah. Jill Briscoe, I used to listen to sermons by her. She and her husband were pastors in Milwaukee. She told a story of a young girl, young adult, came to see her. She said, I used to be awake and alive, and I, Jesus was exciting to me, but somewhere I lost it. <laughs> so she began to go back. Where could it have gone the other way? It turns out about eight or nine months before she had started having a relationship with a non-Christian, sleeping with him and all the rest. And as the pastor began to ask her about that, she said, I don't want to talk about that. He said, that's where it happened. That will do it. That will take you away from Jesus. You better go back. Go back to that fork in the road and go back to where you had it together with Jesus and pick that up. That's what the Bible says, Revelation chapter 2. You've lost your first love. Go back to where you had it before and pick it up again. Do what you did before to have a relationship with Jesus. What did you do with Jesus? Go look for Jesus again. They were one day away. They lost Jesus just for a day. Now you can take this in a good way, a positive way. There's probably people around you who are just one day away from Jesus. God has been working with them. With Joseph and Mary, they had, of course, they had the shepherds, they had the angel. They had the star. God doing the same for people, for you. God has a way of orchestrating events. And you may be, or you, someone you know, someone's close to you, is just one day away. Tomorrow. They could go over the line and sign on the dotted line and give their life to Jesus. They're just one day away. Jesus that close. If you would just be the star, be someone who says something, takes them out to lunch and said, thinking about you. They're one day away, and you could spend a thousand years together in heaven, someone you love. Yeah. But in the negative sense, you get one day away from Jesus. It doesn't take long. You get busy. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll get back to Jesus tomorrow. I'll start going back to church more here soon. After I get over this busy stretch, get over this stress, I'll get back to Jesus. There was a time when you used to be with Jesus. You used to be close. You used to read the Bible. You used to be in a group. You were active in the church. You were part of a youth group. You, you remember that time. And now you're one day away. One day away. Listen to those feelings. And those feelings that something is missing. That I, I think life ought to be better. I thought things would be better than this. Listen to those. They're not telling you to go shopping, not telling you to go eat some sugar. They're looking for Jesus. You're one day away from Jesus. Go back to Jesus. That's where you need to go. 
You don't need more shopping. You don't need more love from somebody. You need to go looking for Jesus. And go back to where you had him. Do the thing that you did before that got you close to him. Go back to that. Go back to Jesus. They find him in the temple talking to the priests. He's asking them questions, but they end up asking him questions. How do we know? Because they said they were amazed by his answers. So they were asking him questions. These are very religious people. They know the Bible. They know the rules. They're in the temple. They keep all the 613 rules, Sabbath rules, and all the rest. These are good people. But they don't know Jesus, and they don't know the Father. They're asking questions about the Father. Satan doesn't care if you become part of a church. He doesn't give up. You read screw tape letters and C.S. Lewis, the senior demon, coaching his nephew demon about a guy. Guy going to church. He feels like he's lost the war. No, oh, no, we got all kinds of tricks for that. Turn him into a legalist. He's in church, but he's keeping all the rules. He's not with Jesus. He's in the church. Got religion, don't have Jesus. I read a great book a while ago called Poisonwood Bible, Barbara Kingsolver. Fantastic book. Said in Congo, a Baptist pastor takes his wife and four daughters down to the Congo, out in the jungle. Pagan witch doctor religion. But his religion is so twisted and so toxic. Wife hates it. The four girls hate it. After one year, they had an election. Jesus or the witch doctor's religion. You walk down the aisle and there would be two bowls and you put your little rock in that bowl. The witch doctor won 56 to 11. The preacher would sometimes try to preach in their language and he would say, Jesus is bangala. He thought he was saying Jesus is magnificent, but he would mispronounce it just a little bit. And what he said was Jesus is poison wood. There was a poison wood tree. And sometimes that's how close religion can be. It could be magnificent. But Satan can twist it and it becomes legalism and toxic and can drive you absolutely crazy. You've all experienced that, I'm sure, religion messed up, doesn't represent God, it's not true religion. I had a lady leave the church because someone yelled at her because she didn't have nylons on. Young man didn't have a tie on Friday night, and the guy yelled at him, don't come back till you have a tie on. Some of my members at uh, Garden Grove left the local church close a few miles away 35 years ago because that pastor would not shake hands with them if they had a wedding ring on. Baggage you carry. Everyone has stories like that. I was golfing with some older men here a few weeks ago. And they were all friends and they asked me. I'm the young one in the group. <laughs> so I'm with this guy that I didn't know. And I said, uh, where are you from? Oh, Glendale. Well, where do you go to church? Oh, I don't go. He said, I did. I know everything. I've been to church all my life. He's a doctor, but he said, I can't be part of a church that discriminates against women, and my son is gay. And my son said to me, Dad, how can you be part of a church that thinks that I'm of the devil? I left the church. Didn't have room for me and people like my son. One way or another, I had two guys. I was preaching at their college overseas. That college would not allow them to sing any song that wasn't in the hymnal. Most simple praise song, the kumbaya, they wouldn't allow it. They said, Pastor Dan, we're out of here. I beg, give, me, give me an hour at Starbucks. Of how many times I've had an hour at Starbucks trying to tell people, we can't lose you over this. Stay, help me. Stay, help me fight for the church. But how many people I've talked to, I said, be careful. Yes, you may come of a church that has got some baggage and you're reacting to the legalism or the hypocrisy or the criticism or whatever else. And the pendulum swings, but you don't stop in the middle. You go over to the other side. 
said, you're not with Jesus. Jesus is there in the middle, balanced, pure, true. But it says, if you swing all the way over here, you're doing all kinds of <clears throat> crazy stuff. You're drinking some wine and you're not going to church. Oh, wow, because I'm not with those hypocrites anymore. I said, you are still being under control of them. You're reacting to them. The pendulum swung because of them. They're still in your head. I said, stay in the middle. That's where Jesus is. Let it go. Let this baggage go that is keeping you from Jesus. I said, if you have to start this new year, if something's happened to you in the past that kept you from Jesus, let it go. Do whatever you do because of Jesus. Not because of church police or anyone else. Live your life for Jesus. Yeah. What about the church? How many people have said to me, you don't need to go to a church to be spiritual? <laughs> You've all maybe said it yourself. But I beg them to look. Where was Jesus? <laughs> he was in a temple. He was in church. It was Mary and Joseph that had left. They're not with Jesus anymore. He's in the church. You want to be with Jesus? Jesus says, I will build my church. Not be not the church you go to, but he has a church. He is tied to a church. He's connected to a church. He died for a church. If you want to be with Jesus, you have to be in his church, wherever that is. The Bible says we follow the lamb wherever he goes. So if he's in church, then you've got to be in a church. Pretty clear. If Jesus is in church and you're not in church, then you are not with Jesus because he's in church. Even if it's not perfect. Now think about that. Finally, there's this. When they finally found him, said, Jesus, <laughs> Mary's tired. She's uh, frantic looking for Jesus. The angel said, this is your son. You're responsible. Now she's lost Jesus. She finally finds him in the temple, and she said, what were you thinking? Stay with us. And Jesus says, I must be about my father's business. My father's business. They call this pronouncement story, pronouncement narrative. Jesus is announcing, this is who I am. Yes, I'm the son, but this is my father. This is who I really am. I'm the son of God. This is the first time father is mentioned in the whole Bible. That God is like a father. We hadn't heard our Father in heaven yet. But from then on, Jesus talks all the time about the Father. Over and over again, God is like a Father. In my Father's house are many mansions. My Father's house is a house of prayer for all nations. I and my Father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He's always talking about the Father. I say what the Father says. My Father's always working. I too am working. My Father, my Father. Jesus' whole life was his father. That was his business. What were he and the priests and the lawyers talking about? It must have been about the father. He's about the father's business. He came down to tell the world the truth about his father. People had questions about his father. He's defending his father. That's what he's been. These people are chief priests of their religion, but they don't know the Father. The boy knows the Father better than the religious people know it. Should that be us? So can I say this carefully? People came to Jesus and said, show me the Father. You want to get close to Jesus, say to him, show me the Father. That's what he wants to do. He'll get close to you if you'll say, just, can you just show me the Father? I've been working on this for 30-some years in my life. Show me the Father. I want to know the Father. I want to know the truth. They asked me last night to come help a group of people about prayer. How can we understand prayer in light of the Father? The 
This is our business. It's the Father's business. If you want to know, get closer to God this new year, then ask him to show you the Father. This is the Father's business. This is what Jesus wanted to do and what he came to do. He did not come down here to make a Disneyland for you and me. He didn't come down here to be the little vending machine or the Santa Claus that you can say, okay, give me, give me. It's not why he came. He didn't come here to be the GPS primarily to tell you where to go left and right. He can do some of that. He didn't come down to be your security system to keep you safe from everything, but he can do some of that. What he came down to do was to show you and me the Father. That's who he is. If you want to get closer to God, ask him to show you the Father. Spend some more time with the Bible, learning about the Father. Read what Jesus had to say about his Father. Ask questions about what the Father is like, and you'll find Jesus. Ask every question, every belief you have, ask this one question. What does it say about the Father? And if you want to know what your business is, your business is the Father's business. It's about the Father. You may be a teacher. That's your job. But your business is the Father's business. You may be a doctor trying to heal people. That's your job. You may be driving a truck. You may be a nurse, whatever it is. But your business is the Father's business. Lift up the Father. Show the world the truth about the Father. This is my dad. I'll tell you a quick story about my dad. My dad loved the church. He's a pastor. He just lived five minutes from here. If my brothers and I were ever frustrated with something about the church, we would complain. He would always defend the church. Well, yeah. Didn't like it if he heard criticism of the church. After a year and a half at La Sierra Church, we ended up in this whole controversy over women's ordination. It's not the debate. I was scared to death. I'm in my early 40s. I was scared. I was threatened with my career and my job. So we had a thousand some people come to this service. People signed to put their name in. A thousand people signed. But I had a separate sheet there <clears throat> for pastors to sign. We work for this organization. We get tithe from this organization. We love the church. <clears throat> but we want to live in a church with equality. Seventy pastors of my friends signed that sheet to say we're with Pastor Dan. We're not going to let Pastor Dan do this by himself. He may be the one on the platform. His name may be on the card, but we're all together. We stand shoulder to shoulder. You come after him, you come after all of us. You have no idea what the 70 people meant to me. My brother's a pastor in San Diego. He signed. <laughs> but when I saw my father, I about killed him to in any way say that the church was making a mistake. But my father got in line and he signed that document. And my father said, I'm with my son. What my son is doing here, I agree with and I stand with him. I am with him. I am on his side. You have no idea what that meant to me. To have my dad go against every loyal bone in his body. And say, I'm with my son. We're going to do this together. This new year, if I could talk you into that. Get back with Jesus. Get back to the Father. If you need to spend more time, if you need to get back to Jesus, you somewhere lost Jesus. Get back to Jesus and say, just show me the Father. Because that's who the Father is. The Father is always with you. The Father is always on your side. This is New Year's. I hope you have a great year financially. I hope we get past this virus. I hope, I hope, I hope. Many things. 
But I hope most of all you will know Jesus better. And you and I will get closer to Jesus. That's all that matters. Let's not be one day away. Wherever Jesus is, we're going to be there with Jesus. Let's pray. Under Father in heaven, I thank you for this story. It's the only story we have between the birth narratives and when he got baptized. At the temple, 12 years old. Poor Mary and Joseph all of a sudden realized, where's Jesus? We lost Jesus. We left Jesus behind. We were with him, but we're not with him now. And if that speaks to anybody here, it speaks to me. I don't want to spend one day this year apart from Jesus. And some of us need to go back and open up a Bible again, find a podcast or we can hear a sermon while we're driving, walking, whatever it takes. Get back to Jesus. Get closer to Jesus. Someday we'll spend a thousand years together. May this year be a taste of that, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the songs. Then we watched as his life ebbed 